AMD finally fixes the 7900 GRE. You can get really tall memory that has a lot of gigabytes on it, and Microsoft is fixing gaming. They're just, they're doing it all, uniting all three teams. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, March 25th, 2024. We're going to start off today talking about the latest driver update that AMD has come out with for the 7900 GRE, which is the latest GPU that they launched about a month ago, which has sold phenomenally well over in other parts of the world. But turns out when they launched it here in the US, a lot of people discovered there's been a bug in this thing. Even though this card launched in July of last year, it only got discovered recently that you couldn't overclock it properly. The memory was locked down in a way that it shouldn't have been. And AMD promised that they were going to fix it. And so they have. And preliminary benchmarks are indicating that, yeah, this is a pretty significant upgrade. If you look at the stock settings from Tech Power Up showing off their 7900 G it got roughly 67 FPS in Time Spy Extreme. With the regular memory overclocked before when it was limited, you got about an 8.2% increase. But now with it being unlocked even more, you're looking at roughly a 15% increase, which makes it perform pretty gosh dang well. You're getting much closer to the 7900 XT in terms of Time Spy Extreme performance. This is not going to apply in every game, but the fact that people around the world were raving about the 7900 GRE came to the American shores and AMD didn't have this fixed is a, a weird situation overall. AMD just constantly being confusing in the software game, but hey, at least it's a good thing that it's fixed now. And what's also a good thing is today's video sponsor. Do you want to get into custom PCs but don't know where to start? Don't worry, because our sponsors Velstorm and Newegg are here to guide you through. Velstorm's PCs are meticulously designed to provide optimal performance and exceptional parts at every budget level. Their mission is to provide a unique gaming experience to each individual's needs. Rest assured that your PC is expertly assembled by a dedicated team of technicians who put their passion and knowledge of computer to full use, allowing you to get the most out of your new PC. And each PC that Velstorm builds is put to the test before it leaves their doors to ensure your system is delivering its full potential. Additionally, should you ever need it, every Velstorm gets lifetime support from a team that puts customer satisfaction first. Skip the hassle of building yourself and let the experts at Velstorm treat you to the PC of your dreams. You can check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Velstorm and Newegg for sponsoring today's video. All right, now I'm going to give you a little tea about how Microsoft is fixing gaming, and that's according to a Microsoft insider. They're coming out with a handheld, at least prototyping one. This is coming after the reports that there was a new dev kit Microsoft was issuing out there for people to test their games on. There was some speculation that it was for potentially a gaming handheld. It turns out that that is very likely what's going to be happening. So according to reports, this is a prototype. Microsoft could can it at any point, and it may never see the light of day. But the biggest issue with handhelds like the R RG Ally and the Legion Go is the fact that they are running Windows. It is a suboptimal operating system for gaming on the go. It's just too complicated. It has too many weird quirks and bugs and frustrations. You can't set things the way that you need to in order to make for an impeccable handheld gaming experience. Now, it's not quite clear. While this is part of the Xbox division and while this is something Microsoft is working on in their gaming side, I wouldn't necessarily, this is just me speaking, nothing indicated in this leak, I wouldn't necessarily trust Microsoft to not just come out with an Xbox branded gaming handheld that runs Windows in the most frustrating way possible just to ruin everybody. It's just their version of the RG Ally. It's running a simplified version of Windows 11. I could, I could see that happening. I hope that it does not. I am scared of if they do that, but if it's running regular Xbox operating system, then I think it could potentially work, especially if they combine it more with a pitch for Xbox cloud streaming for running those games that maybe might be too intense for an AMD Z1 Extreme chip. Any new AAA title that they're coming out with, you could play it on Xbox cloud gaming, but for things like or in the Will of the Wisps, you can play those natively on the gaming handheld. I'd like to see that. And you could potentially load it into a single stick of RAM because Micron is showing off some of their server RAM, their DDR5 8800 mega transfer per second RAM that is a 
tall form factor, 256 gigabytes per DIMM. And these are meant to go into servers, which could potentially be into 12 channel memory setup, which means you could get three terabytes of RAM in a single server setup, which is using all of these, but they do consume 20 watts a piece. So you could potentially be looking at 240 watts of power going just to your RAM. Obviously you'd have to be lighting up your RAM all at the same time, but if you need three terabytes of RAM in a single setup, I mean, whew, you're probably using it. I can't afford it. You probably can't either. Let's wait till the Linus Tech Tips video comes out where he runs Minesweeper on it or something like that. And let's wait for NVIDIA to refresh their mid-tier GPUs, the 4070, 4060 Ti, and 4060, all getting new under the hood changes. They're just gonna be cut down versions of already existing GPUs. This really isn't much besides the fact that these GPUs are gonna be slightly different, but you shouldn't notice any performance differences whatsoever. Just like you shouldn't notice the difference between me and Reese. We sound exactly the same. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, guys, and hey, got some deals for you. Starting off today, we have this Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 420 ARGB AIO CP Liquid Cooler for only $99.99, making it $56 off. But then next up, we have this Acer Nitro 27 inch 1440p 170 hertz gaming monitor hitting all the sweet spots for only $169.99, making it $80 off. And then lastly, we have the MetaQuest 2 VR headset, specifically the 128 gig version down where it always should have been at $199, making it $50.99 off. And them's the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers well reese here's the bad deal when it comes to apple silicon turns out that it has an unpatchable hardware vulnerability which allows hackers to steal cryptographic keys from the m1 m2 m3 max chips which is just bad news bears and while it's unfortunate that this chip level exploit can allow people and nefarious actors to garner all of that encrypted data that you're supposed to have it turns out that they have to bypass apple's gatekeeper protection on top of this vulnerability hack and then it can take as long as 10 hours for them to run the software which you know with uh compute in improvements in the future maybe that timeline will be shortened down but there are multiple layers that you have to get through in order to actually even access this vulnerability so the likelihood of this affecting many people who are running anything by apple not very high apple can't patch it and there likely will just have to be software mechanisms developed that uh, potentially mitigate this risk but uh, apple not it can get viruses too they lied to you when they told you that they couldn't and everybody's lying to you about whether or not the three gpu companies can get along amd nvidia and intel we know that they can live in harmonious matrimony and it turns out microsoft is going to be the company to do that they announced at gdc that they are indeed working on direct sr direct super resolution which allows them to just have things like dlss xcss and fsr on their own you don't have to have it developed by nvidia you don't have to have it through the pipeline with amd it could just be baked in as the game developers are working on the game they can have a straightforward pipeline to implement these things and it's not up to whether or not nvidia is giving them all of the hardware to make sure that they're prioritizing their development or you have an amd sponsored title like starfield where you don't even have dlss on launch it could potentially be something that is glorious for for everybody fusing it all together making it simple and easy this is a good thing that microsoft talked about at gdc the only problem is they have no timeline for this work graphs which was something that amd showed off we talked about this in last week's episode of hot news which allows for faster rendering pipelines for just regular old video games that at least is currently in the mix of when it's getting developed direct sr microsoft had no indication of when we're gonna get it but microsoft also filed a patent about how they're gonna fix ray tracing. Turns out that the way ray tracing is currently done by AMD, NVIDIA, and all the others is bad, and it, it consumes too much VRAM. You think the problem with your RTX 4070 Ti is the fact that it only has 12 gigs of VRAM? No, it's the fact that ray tracing is done poorly, and it should be fixed. Microsoft here doing that, and it's just essentially using level of detail setups for how the rendering pipeline for ray tracing works, and mitigating that before it actually goes through the rendering pipeline and making sure that some of that stuff gets offloaded to the SSD instead of being processed on the graphics card. And that way you don't have to kind of hobble it together with upscaling technology. You can utilize the hardware that you already have instead of having to fake the actual detail that's already in there using like DLSS. It can actually be natively built in with the retracing that's already there. Microsoft 
looks like they, they have a good handle on what's happening with gaming. Xbox might not be doing so well in the hardware sales, but they are making and shaking and baking some moves when it comes to making sure that your gaming experience, at least as a PC gamer, is getting better overall, which I'm pro Microsoft right now? That's a, that's a future I didn't see myself in. And I did see myself responding to your comments from Friday's episode of Hot News. We got Captain Jonathan saying, nice to see these near monopolies starting to face consequences for their anti-consumer, anti-competition practices. Let's hope Nvidia is next on the chopping block. After that, we can set our sights on Adobe. Yeah, that seemed to be the very common sentiment in most of the comments on Friday's episode that good, this is what Apple gets. I did see a couple of people be like, oh, but Apple isn't a monopoly when it comes to smartphones. And that's not really what this is about. It's actually about the monopolistic and anti-competitive practices that they have in software development for their ecosystem in which they are the monopoly. So software developers can't actually make software that's good for the end user because Apple decides, hey, you can't have real-time access to data. But we can, we can use the APIs that do exist only for ourselves, but because you're third party, you're not allowed to have them. So it's not that people are forced to use Apple smartphones, it's the fact that within the Apple smartphone, there's not as much choice. And that's kind of at least how I understand this lawsuit from the United States against them for it is. Then Tomb sent Pumba saying the DOJ versus Apple discovery is going to be very interesting. And what if saying, I feel like this is going to happen to Nvidia soon, which there's a lot of comments on like, no, and Nvidia is the golden child right now. Apple was the golden child for a long time. They had, they had, they could do it no wrong and make all of the money. And now that, uh, now that we've got our other golden goose in Nvidia laying all of those bajillion dollar graphics card eggs, I, I think that uh, Nvidia is probably safe from investigation for a little while. Maybe uh, it might catch up to them eventually. We'll have to we'll have to see how that plays out. And then I had a few of you answer my question on how do I d bring Epic Games folders to a different computer on an external drive and. What I expected, it's all the hacky workaround solutions that Epic doesn't natively build into Epic Games. So Koga Cigar is saying, the workaround is this, tell the launcher to install the game and when they install this on a download, close the launcher, copy the folder with the full game, relaunch the launcher and it will check the files. It sucks like anything Epic does. And then other people saying the, the exact same thing and that the verification of the files can take a little while, which this is just like exactly my point. It's just a frustrating experience. It kind of sucks. Steam is way better when it comes to this type of thing. And I wish that both Epic Games and the Xbox Store would support it because there's games on the Xbox Store that I like to put on different computers and unfortunately I have to download it fresh every single time. It's and then we're going to close it off with a favorite topic of mine, and that is how I pronounce the word G-I-F. <laughs> Vance Lida saying, wait, how did you pronounce Jifes? And this Let's give you a little deep dive into the lore of why I call it Jifes. And that is because simply of this PBS idea channel video called, do you pronounce it Jife or Jife? And essentially what it comes down to is that every single argument that you can make for whether or not you should pronounce GIF as a given version, whether it's GIF, GIF or otherwise, is simply based on flawed logic that you don't apply unilaterally throughout the entire range of the human English language. Or even in the video, they go through the fact that it's also not ubiquitous amongst foreign languages outside of the English. And the idea behind Jif is that it's kind of a linguistic joke in that you could potentially spell the word fish by using sounds from words that have that. So like the F from enough, that's an F sound. You could use a GH there. You could spell fish G-H-O-T-I. The O comes from women. The T-I comes from something like ration. G-H-O-T-I spells fish. Jif, it's just a kind of an inverse of that where you can mess with the syllables to make it sound how you want and it's mostly just to mock the idea that language is fixed and hard and that other people's authority like the creator of gifs uh can tell me how it's pronounced i don't give a frick i don't give a frick how shakespeare pronounced the words that he invented and just because it's a acronym doesn't mean that i have to pronounce it the way i want to graphics interchange format who the frick cares i don't pronounce laser lasier or scuba scuba it's, it doesn't matter. Go watch that video, it's fantastic. I've watched it dozens of times. I stand by it. Mike Rugnetta from PBS Idea Channel has influenced a lot of my contentiousness when it comes to how we on the internet like to practice language and argue about it because you're just, we're, we're just all little sheep, little sheep brains. Now I'm just repeating what somebody else said too. I'm gonna take my little sheep brain on out of here. I'm done with hot news. I'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News tomorrow.